Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lisa Kubotera, and I will be speaking on behalf of my team, who had the pleasure of working with the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. We would like to thank our client representatives, Melissa Siaka and Rob Branford, as well as our faculty advisor, Professor Luis Rosen. I will begin by introducing the threats Kenya's wildlife face and how our client is addressing these issues. I will go into our project objectives, the methodology that we used, as well as our final findings. Lastly, I will conclude by going over our recommendations and our conclusions. What you see here are orphaned elephant calves. Malima was left behind by her herd because she was too weak to travel due to dehydration. Ajali was hit by a car trying to cross a road that fragmented his habitat, resulting in him being left behind by his herd. Carissa was found pacing next to her immobile mother who was shot by a farmer because they were eating his crops and Muashoti suffered from severe injuries due to a poacher's snare. The presence of these orphans are emblematic of grave environmental threats that affect every species on the planet, including humans. But why is this important? Elephants are a key umbrella species, meaning by protecting them, we also protect wild species and natural habitats, securing a wide range of ecosystem services, such as carbon sequestration and climate regulation, as well as our natural resources. For these reasons, wildlife conservation organizations are working tirelessly trying to protect key umbrella species such as the elephants. The David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, or DSWT, is a regional leader in wildlife conservation spearheaded by Dr. Dame Daphne Sheldrick, and with over 40 years of field experience, the Trust has developed a unique integrative conservation approach in wildlife and habitat protection. This, with staff of over 200 people, they are pioneers in successful orphaned calf reintroduction and maintain long-term populations through reproduction. Through their extensive work over the years, they have developed strong relationships with local communities as well as government entities such as Kenya Wildlife Service. To ensure the reintroduced calves do not face threats that made them orphans in the first place, they realized they needed a holistic approach. Therefore, they launched programs such as the Veterinary Unit, Community Outreach, Habitat Conservation, and Anti-Poaching Teams. These are the efforts are the backbone of DSWT's remarkable success. Um, however, these various efforts are overshadowed by wide recognitions for their orphans project. And that is the issue my team has tried to address this semester. Our client's vision is to be known as leaders in conservation management in order to influence policy and practice for wildlife rehabilitation and conservation. The output our team developed is a communications and outreach strategy to help raise awareness and support for their multidisciplinary approach among stakeholders and new audiences. The Trust's larger goal for this effort is to encourage adoption of scalable and sustainable strategies for conservation across geographies. This is why our strategy focuses on UK and US audiences where the Trust already has a presence. To develop our plan, our team has looked into current communication efforts and public awareness levels. Then we conducted comparative analysis amongst peer organizations to identify best practice. This research guided my team into creating a communications plan as well as methods to monitor and evaluate their progress. The US and UK offices are in charge of handling the DSWT communications. They broadcast the field stories they receive from the Kenya office and circulate them on various communication platforms. Additionally, the relationship with journalists helps uh, them fe be featured in major publications, increasing general public awareness. The Trust's main communication platform are their social media channels. They have not invested in advertising, but gained significant followership as shown here. We observe that majority of their messages revolve around the orphan's message and they do not tailor uh, according to specific audiences. This is further supported by their donation sources where 84% of contributions are from foster parents and 16% are from other efforts. When comparing communications to peer organizations that you see on the left, we observe that these organizations actively produce their own written work 
such as op-eds, white papers, and press releases, which cover their field work, campaigns, and larger impact stories. Such written work on their websites and communication platforms are often further promoted by other news websites as shown here. In addition to enhancing their current efforts, we have identified four audience segments to increase awareness and support for their approach. Millennials were identified, especially the undergraduate and graduate students, because they are part of the largest audience segment and they are the future leaders who are cause-driven. By targeting them, we are ensuring that awareness and support will continue with years to come. Also, by building relationships with NGO leaders would raise awareness of DSWT's practices and facilitate knowledge sharing amongst the conservation community. Thirdly, engaging the pol political leaders would be the most direct way in which DSWT can share their knowledge and expertise to influence policy. And finally, Academics are an important segment to target as they, are, they can lend a voice of validation in any new practice that is developed and promoted. For the purpose of this presentation, I will walk you through the low, medium, high intensity recommendations regarding our millennials. How to reach the target audience segment is dependent on the intensity of resources and capacity, which include components such as work hours and funds. Low intensity are activities that DSWT can currently implement within their current capacity within a short time frame. On the other end of the spectrum, high intensity actions are actions that they cannot currently implement but will be able to achieve with extensive resources. Regarding the millennials, low intensity actions include adjusting posting times and tailoring its messages on communication platforms that are most efficient in reaching them, such as Facebook and Instagram. Medium intensity initiatives, for example, include in establishing relationships with student chapters. And an example of high intensity is hosting and engaging on campus events. I will now go provide you with an example of how implementing our recommendations could look like. We found that Facebook is one of the platforms that millennials use, and it can be used as a tool to direct them to the DSWT's website. Studies show that posting on Saturday and Saturday, uh, Sunday can achieve 32% more engagement, which is further supported by the Trust Facebook analytics as shown here. We took one of DSWT's previous posts and altered its timing in addition to its phrasing and length. These adjustments eliminate the necessity of clicking see here, help grab the attention of the audience quickly, and redirect interested parties to the Trust website to read the full story, which provides the opportunity for deeper engagement into the projects and content. Engaging with university students through social media will help cultivate relationships with student chapters, such as Society for Conservation Biology. This organization help host conferences and networking events for their members um, on campuses and off campuses. Such relationships can help the trust create the presence at universities. Organizing or being part of symposiums such as the integrated conservation shown here can go a long way in establishing the trust as experts in the student community and spark relationships with academics at the university. Building upon DSWT's current audience and efforts, our recommendations aim to heighten engagement in major cities, which is where many of our target audiences are present. Gaining support for these people can lead to nonprofits recognizing their work, resulting in more collaborations and partnerships. Having this kind of relationship can increase awareness and presence within the conservation community and related conferences. The rise in awareness can also help increase the features in major publications that highlight their initiatives in mitigating environmental threats in addition to their successful orphanage. Thank you. Thank you.